If you're like me, you might have searched the internet or were referred to videos on what the best settings for Guild Wars 2 is, and in your search or recommendations, you happened upon a 50 plus minute video covering all of those settings. While that's still viable as it's an in-depth explanation for each of those settings, 50 plus minutes is a long time to watch a video just to optimize your settings. That's why I'm making this video. I'm going to respect your time and condense all of that information into hopefully less than 10 minutes. Papa Traffy here, and I'd still consider myself a new player, but I have a lot of veteran players who only give me the best advice and I'm here to pass that forward. If you want to catch me live and hang out, a link for my Twitch will be in the description. Otherwise, let's go ahead and jump right in. Starting with the general options, there's going to be several changes. In the user interface category, we want to start by enabling the in-game clock and setting it to local time. This helps us when using the event timer wiki just to make sure we can be on time to any event. It's recommended to set your cursor contrast to low or use the third party application, Yellow Mouse. This makes it easier to keep track of your mouse in large group content when there's a lot going on. AOE loot we definitely want enabled as it lets us hit a button in order to loot everything around us instead of what we're standing on. And auto loot is a great feature but it can only be used once you get the mastery interior. This next section we want to check everything from show all enemy names to show all usable object names. This allows for you to clearly see everything on screen reducing confusion or any hardship finding something on the screen. Show skill recharge is another important option as it allows us to see the cooldowns on our abilities. Show target health percent isn't necessary, but it gives us a clear picture as to the amount of health an enemy or ally has left. Thick party and squad health bars are another option we want enabled as it makes health bars more visible and easier to see. Same thing applies with always show party and squad health bars. Visibility will make group content a lot easier. That leads us into the dynamic HUD. We can leave everything here as show everything always. If you want to disable the HUD quickly for a nice screenshot, the default keybind to do that is Control, Shift, and H. Now onto the camera category. Most importantly here, we want to max out the field of view. If you want to get up close and personal, you can still zoom in. But this will allow us to see more when zoomed out all of the way. Next, we want to disable camera shake, a very unimportant feature, and if you're easily made nauseous, camera shake can cause that. Last in camera is to enable free camera. This will allow you to move independent of your camera. Basically, if you're walking forward, you can watch behind you without the camera whipping back around. Combat and movement is another important category as it affects the way you fight in game. Fast with range indicator is the recommended selection for new players. Normal can perform relatively slow, and fast can cause some skills to be extremely inaccurate, especially if you aren't completely familiar with the game. Disable, 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 double tap to evade. I can't tell you how many times I've wasted a dodge or rolled off of a platform during jump puzzles because I accidentally double tapped a movement key. Just disable it to save yourself some stress. You can also disable double click to auto attack. It's not necessary to disable as most people don't generally play like that. Disable auto-targeting. This can cause a lot of issues with escape abilities causing you to jump into a fight and it can cause issues with targeting the correct enemy. Enabling skill retargeting allows you to better track where your AoE ability will land. Basically, it causes the skill to land where the mouse is at the end of the key press. You will want to enable lock ground target at maximum range as it allows you to more comfortably aim without risk of your ability not landing because you've gone out of the ability's range. Everything in the competitive category is extremely preference-based. I'd suggest team colors for everyone, standard enemy models enabled, and world vs. world simple nameplates for everyone. Standard enemy models helps a lot in PvP as it makes all models human with basic armor. No longer do you have to stress your eyes to see Asura running around. And simple nameplates allow for less visual clutter while in world vs. world. In the groups category, we want to enable show all commander tags just so you can see where you might need to go or want to go more easily in reference to commanders on the map. Last of general options are for the mounts. Disabling conditional mount movement means you can use the jump key to just jump instead of using the mount special movement ability. This restricts you to using the skill on the hotbar to use that ability though. And then you can disable the mount camera roll to avoid some nausea. That leads us into graphic options, which for the most part, a lot doesn't need to be changed unless you have a really old computer. 
Reflections, we want to set to terrain sky or off for improved frame rate. Shadows, we want to set to high or none for improved frame rates as well. For the character model limit, there are some changes to make here dependent on your situation. By default, you want it on lowest, but for raids or PvP, you want to set it to lower medium. Character model quality, we want to set to lowest except in PvP. And the last is post-processing. We just want to disable this to make enemy AoE effects more visible. Now, these last two sections are all personal preference, but I'll give my personal opinion on them. In the sound options, the environment volume controls the volume of the environment, things like running water. So if you feel like it's too loud, you can lower it. And the effect volume would be the sound of your attacks or your character grunting when they attack. Not too important, but those options are there. And then there's keybinds. If there's one thing I've learned playing MMOs, it's that keybinds are 100% personal preference. Especially since there's a lot of different keyboards and mice with different setups. But I'll put mine up on the screen and talk about my recommendations. First up, use mouse buttons. It makes things a lot easier to use. I know some people who put the dodge for Guild Wars 2 on a mouse button. I personally have my fifth upper ability on the mouse button and my healing. Otherwise, on the keyboard, I use everything from the number 5 and to the left for my keybinds, while using shift as an alteration for those keys as well. Keeping everything within tilde to 5 allows for your left hand to better reach everything. But if you have a massive hand or really long fingers, that might not be necessary. That's all for the settings though. If you want something more in-depth as far as keybinds and graphics go, feel free to let me know. This video was just to give you a quicker synopsis of the best settings in Guild Wars 2, and I believe I've performed that. As always though, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. Otherwise, peace.